Hey, hello, hello. Got a treat for you today. We are going to be playing Baldur's Gate with SCS installed. And I am going to bump the difficulty up to maximum. Play through this. Also, uh, second game and third game as well. So we're going to play the whole trilogy um, on SCS, hold for hardware. It's going to be a blast. This has been one of my favorite games for a very, very, very long time. This whole series. It is so good. Played it a bunch of times. So don't worry, even though this is an insane challenge that is going to be extremely difficult, we got this. We're going to make it happen. Um, now, uh, the first thing is that we need to install SCS. You can see here I've got this terminal window popped up. I know that's very intimidating, but do not we'll walk you through it. Not as scary as it looks. <clears throat> so, first things first, what you want to do is uh, you download installer for it. It's, you can see it's called uh, Stratagems. Sword Coast Stratagems is what SCS stands for. So you can go download that from the Gibberlings 3. That's the, the place that everybody's getting it from. That's a safe place to find it. Um, and it will, depending on which operating your system you're on, if you're on a Mac, you'll see setup-stratagems.command. And if you're on a uh, Windows, then you'll see instead uh, setup-stratagems.exe. Either way, you want to extract that into your, uh, your game file. That's probably, if you're playing on Steam, that's going to be under uh, wherever your Steam is installed. And then you go to Steam Apps, Common, um, and you should see Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition there. You want to click on that. Um, and you should be in a place where you can see like a, a thing that you could click on to run the game, the actual executable itself, and a bunch of folders. Um, if, if you see that you're in the right place, that's where you want to put this setup-stratagems.exe or .command and all the other stuff that comes with it. <clears throat> if you got it there, then you just click on it, and it'll bring up a window like this. Whether you're on Windows or Mac, um, from here on, it's the same. This is the terminal. This is what uh, computer hackers use and um, other people who, uh, you know, this is used for a lot of things, not just a um, very fancy. You can um, do some, let's see, what am I trying to say? Uh, it's not as complex as it, as it seems at first. There are effectively uh, commands that you type in, and not knowing those commands is really the difficulty. But as soon as you know what they are and what they do, you know it's not too hard to tell it what to do, learning what to do. Um, now, in this case, though, they've done all of that coding stuff for you. You don't have to worry about any kind of coding, the things you would normally be doing when you're looking at this terminal. What we're going to be doing is picking numbers, zero through something, typing that in, and then pressing enter. Uh, sometimes we will also press I to represent install, for example, Y to represent Yes, um, and it will tell us what to do as we go. So they've done a very good job of developing this, even if you're not super tech savvy. If you can get to the point where this is popping up and it's not giving you the error message saying it isn't in the game directory, which if, it, if you get that, uh, you might need to move it uh, to a, a different location. Um, if you can get this to pop up and it looks like this, you choose your language, um, and then it'll ask which language you want to choose the game in, or play the game in, presumably the same, but not necessarily. I like that they have that option. And from there, uh, it'll ask you if you want to view the re README. Now, if you haven't done this before, it might be a good idea, but I have. I have. Um, <clears throat> and then you can see we've got these different components. Would you like to display? Would you like to display? Would you like to display? Beneath this, we have put Y, 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 meaning yes, 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 yes. Um, and I have, just to make sure that it's working, installed this first component here, includes spells from Icewind Dale. Oh, hey, I'm doing great. Thanks. Just uh, walking through how to get this mod uh, installed to Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. It is. It makes the game really a lot better in a lot of ways. Um, it's commonly regarded as a difficulty mod. Um, but you don't necessarily have to play it on high difficulties. I think even on lower difficulties, it makes the game a lot more fun. I would recommend it even for newer players. Um, uh, if As long as they have experience with strategy games and RPGs already. So uh, I did click to install. So we're getting all these spells from Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition. That's going to be very helpful. Those can be used against us 
and by us. And you can see we've got lots of files that we can scroll here. I'll just click and drag down um, tons of stuff. Uh, this took a couple minutes of it just doing all this for me. And you can see, boom, it stops. Uh, and we get another question, <clears throat> install component. Um, and we are going to want these divine spells from Icewind Dale. So we just type in I, hit enter, and there it goes. Take our hands off. We're not doing anything. All the fancy computer hacker stuff is happening behind the scenes. We don't need to worry about it. Um, like I was saying before, if this is happening, you've got it in the right place. So you're you're good to go. As long as you're not also running Baldur's Gate at the same time, you shouldn't have any problems. And yeah, we're just going to install uh, a few different patches here. Now, what this does, if you're not aware, um, it does generally increase the difficulty of the game. So if you're playing on normal, it's going to be harder than the vanilla game on normal. So if you um, want an easier experience, definitely tone it down to the easier difficulties than you might normally expect. Um, and uh, in particular, it improves the enemy AI. That's the big thing, the big reason why I recommend uh, installing this is the enemies don't usually use their spells very well, which makes mages not nearly as threatening as they should be. Um, and you will see this if you play yourself as a mage, uh, just how powerful they can become, and the enemy mages are kind of wimpy. They don't use their abilities nearly to the level that an, uh, a mage in this setting actually would. Um, so we'll install some improvements to their AI scripting so that they act a bit more like a real mage, and they're a lot more deadly. Um, uh, additionally, we're going to add in a bunch of spells, which they'll know how to use, um, and we'll add in a bunch of magical items, um, some class combinations, uh, really open up a lot of things. Yeah, sure, ask away. Uh, just, just going on its own, you know, I don't, I don't have to do anything for a little while, it's gonna just run. Wanted to uh, put this out there so that if anybody was put off by trying to install this, um, Ah, how to get into coding. Well, um, personally, I only know a little bit about coding myself. Um, I didn't make this, for example. This is something some people way more knowledgeable than I made. Um, but I do know a little bit about it. And where I started was with Code Academy. Um, if you're not familiar, it's a website. I think it's called codeacademy.com. Um, and it lets you, it gives you a nice framework. And if I remember correctly, it's free also. A nice framework to learn JavaScript in. Um, and JavaScript is a very, very powerful language, and most other languages are pretty similar to JavaScript. Um, so if you know JavaScript, you have a good framework to learn about the other languages by learning, oh, okay, this language doesn't require semicolons, you know, this language requires the little arrows instead of brackets here, and so on and so on. Oh, cool. Yeah, I did. That was where I started as well, was when I was a senior. Um, I, I did this college preparatory program, and um, what part of that was computer science, and I made, I think it was a calculator and a minesweeper? Yeah, made, made a 10 by 10 minesweeper map. Oh, fun, fun. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very interesting, and I did, uh, I did learn a lot from that, and I, I did learn to, uh, to do some other coding things. Um, that really inspired me to play around with my uh, TI-83 calculator a bit more, um, which has a whole fancy uh, language on it called BASIC, which is all caps, B-A-S-I-C, and that is an entire coding language that exists just in the TI-83 framework, um, but it's pretty sophisticated as well. It's a label-based system, totally different from Java, um, but I, I got pretty interested in that and learned to use it to make some really helpful math uh, solvers. Honestly, they're uh, fairly potent. Come to think of it, you know, if I could dig those files up, I bet I could help my uh, my math students with those by sharing them. Uh, yeah, good talk. <laughs> that's all I have to share. I'm a, a math tutor by trade. That's that's my actual day job. And um, but yeah, I guess I'll have to uh, I'll have to take those up or just recode them. That's uh, something that could really help my students. Let's see here. We're uh, getting all sorts of spells. We've got entropy shield now. This one's mass cause light wounds. That's cool. Uh, animal rage for clerics. So we're getting all sorts of good stuff. That'd be very interesting. Hmm. How old are my students? Um, so my students, they're mostly high schoolers. I have some college students as well. Um, I tutor everything from 
um, like algebra one up through and uh, a little beyond pre-calculus. I don't actually have any calculus students, but I, I can tutor it. I just don't have any. So yeah, it ranges. Um, most of them like mid to late teens and adults. I have some adult learners too. I do um, also ACT and SAT uh, preparatory tutoring. So that uh, that's around the same age group. Some adult learners and some junior seniors. It's nice. It's uh, right around that age where their their personality starts to come together, and um, I, I liked it. Uh, they're good at like asking questions. You know, at that time, like uh, I think with younger students, you kind of have to be a mind reader, uh, figure out what kind of questions they're trying to ask you because they don't really have the words or, or the processing there yet. A lot of the time, um, but with a little older students like the the high school students. I, yeah, I have an easier time working. I don't have to don't have to do that trick as much. They're a bit more. Uh, uh, what am I trying? They have a better vocabulary. Yeah, Mo but in general, older students have have a broader vocabulary, more able to help themselves or uh, express themselves. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I think I do sometimes. I, I'm an independent contractor, so it just kind of depends what contracts come my way. I have done. Um, like I think I did a couple middle school courses for geometry, like introduction to like um, algebra and geometry stuff, transition from like uh, middle school to high school, that a couple times. But that's not really the norm for me. Most of my students are a little. Yeah, yeah, I um, I do. I like working with kids. They uh, they tend to get along with me pretty well. I'm um, I'm very talkative and kind of gregarious when I'm when I'm teaching. So I like to mix in jokes and break time and fun activities. Um, oh, I'm I'm pretty old actually. I'm uh going on thirty now. I'm, I'm an old maid at this point. So. There we go. Um, place plus one arrows and other non magical. Non magical find one. Okay, so this is a big uh, difficulty adjustment for this game because um, some enemies require magical damage. So, you know what? Let's do it. Let's make things. Uh, oh, hey, thanks. <laughs> That's very kind. I, I appreciate that. That makes me feel, that makes me feel good. Um, yeah, let's do that. Just to make our life a little harder, we're going to replace every single um, plus one arrow with an arrow that does similar damage, um, but doesn't, isn't considered magical. Um, and we'll say that these fine weapons are immune to the iron crisis, so that we have something to use. Reduce the number of arrows. Yes, so arrows of dispelling are um, I think important to have around, but some of them are a little bit too available. So let's do that. But we really have to think about um, when we use those very limited resource. So that is going to change a few shops. Wider selection of random scrolls. Absolutely, we want to get all those random scrolls in there. For some reason, the random scrolls only have a handful. Now we can get basically all of them. That's going to be really cool. Oh, I got a message from my mom. Oh, she sent me a heart. How nice. Let's see. Uh, reduce the power of Inquisitors to spell magic. So I've actually played around with this a bit. It is a bit powerful as it is, but it's also like their entire thing. Um, I don't think I'm going to play with an Inquisitor, but I like to play with this usually around 1.5 instead of 2 times. That seems a bit more balanced, because if you take it out completely, then they hardly have anything at all. They just get to spell magic and it's mediocre. There's not really much reason to play that class. Increase the power of cure wounds, cause cure, cause wound spells to a level under third edition. Um, so yeah, these are basically useless spells in this um, until you get to heal. Um, 
heal or inflict. Let's do heal and inflict maximum. So this is going to help and hurt us. Uh, we're going to take crazy damage from harm spells, but we're also going to be able to heal ourselves consistently. Spells aren't going to be wastes of slots at the early level. Pretty much until you get heal, which you don't even have available until uh, on a lot of characters until Baldur's Gate 2, uh, healing is just garbage. And uh, we aren't going to have a lot of money to spend on potions. So let's make healing good. Let's make harming good too. Again, uh, anything that we buff up, our enemies are going to be able to use against us too. So that's going to be scary. Restoration and Lester Restoration. Ability score damage. So this is uh, something that should be that way, I think. Um, and we're also going to be up against a lot of ability score damage. Balance reasons, let's do that. Otherwise, I think we just don't have enough Lester Restoration scrolls. Uh, rest and rest and rest a lot in certain parts of the game. Faster bears, yeah, let's make bears fast. That sounds scary. Oh, hey, welcome. Um, oh, uh, yeah, no, I think that's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wondered if those were bots. I guess I should get a get a ch an Autobot chat moderator in here to uh, filter those because I've gotten that message once before. I guess it might be good for the algorithm. I mean, thanks, bot. Appreciate the chat. <laughs> Don't fall for the scam. It's probably a scam. Improve shape shifting. Sure. It just does all this stuff. Occasionally, we have to press a key, press enter. I just realized I don't have my uh, my. There we go. Hold up now. Ah. So reputation is a mechanic where very high reputation uh, gives you discounts at stores and makes people like you. Uh, so it generally makes the thing the game easier. Um, low reputation makes people hate you. That generally makes the game harder playing through on. Although it does um, certain reputations will cause certain outcomes in, in game events as well. This game is if you're not familiar, it's very open world. Uh, it's like Skyrim before Skyrim was cool, and <laughs> about 20 years before Skyrim was cool, honestly. And uh, so we do have this reputation mechanic, how well known we are. Um, having played with this before, it increases really fast. So let's just decrease it by half. That seems about right. Improved NPC customization. I do like that. Some of the, um, there are some arbitrary restrictions on. Certain characters, you just can't customize them certain ways, and that's weird. Um, and also, uh, in the class customization, um, there were a couple oversights. So this will fix those so that you can actually make characters that you should be able to make in the beginning of the game. Patching away, patching away, adding in all sorts of options. And these SPL files, these are scripts for, uh, I believe, effects, sometimes um, enemies, sometimes uh, text for a weapon to show when you hover over it to give you a tip. It's all sorts of things. But just adjusting those slightly. Lauren is a person, so is Dinah here. So this is doing something to them. Uh, just gonna go and handle everything. We'll get all this installed before long, and off to the races. We'll start doing our team building. Yeah. Go. 
That's my cat. Okay. Right. Yes, that is the crew. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is going to take a little while. I appreciate you hanging out. Yeah. So glad to have a fan. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, welcome, welcome. Yeah. But um, it is going to be a little while of just pretty much this. I think maybe about 20 minutes or so. So maybe grab a snack. Um, get your uh, favorite hot beverage of choice. Heck, I'm probably going to do the same thing. Make a little bit of coffee. Just chill out. I'll uh, get started on some planning. Not sure yet. I haven't actually put any thought into this. I just saw that there's a, a Baldur's Gate community for this uh, this this game on uh, Twitch. It's like I freaking love this game. <laughs> it's I gotta get into this community. So I I uh, actually have already beaten Baldur's Gate two on SCS. I haven't played Baldur's Gate one on SCS yet. But I beat Baldur's Gate two with SCS on. Um, on insane difficulty, I had a blast with that. I am almost done with Throne of Fall on insane difficulty, but it's, it's still points in multiple. But okay, yes, this this is just a quality of life change. Oh, hey, no worries, we're just doing this. It's gonna be about twenty minutes, um, maybe even thirty or so. So grab a snack, grab your favorite hot beverage of choice. Um, it's gonna be a little while. We're just uh, installing this. I just wanted to uh, talk about what's going on here. I know a lot of people. Uh, probably would do SES, but they're intimidated by it because they get to this and it's scary. So I wanted to just put a video out there that includes this part of the process uh, so that people know what they're in for and uh, have a little bit of a walkthrough guide on, on what's going on. Now, this is a quality of life thing. Um, thieves always get skill points in multiples of five, um, and <clears throat> there's not really any reason to micromanage them by the single point like that. Um, it's very marginal benefits for each point. So this is a major quality of life thing. It'll just save you time in the menus, save you five clicks, <laughs> uh, or rather, I guess, uh, yeah, five clicks per level, uh, as opposed to 25 clicks, or rather just a, a longer, a shorter click and hold, I suppose. Um, so let's see. We are not going to skip Candlekeep because I want to show this off for people who haven't played the game and who haven't played SCS before. I want to show off how different it is. Um, so we are going to hit no here. That is just an N and then enter. And that will skip that. Um, install component makes spell sequencers and contingencies into innate, innate abilities. So what this does, it doesn't, it doesn't actually change anything about them other than the menu where they appear. Uh, these will appear, instead of being under your spells, under the little star icon on the far right at the bottom, which we'll see once we get into the game. Now, I like this. You don't have to install this if you don't like it, but I do think this is great because sometimes it can be hard to find these uh, sequencers and contingencies amidst your other spells because there's so many of them. So having them separate is pretty nice, and they do 
they don't do anything when you cast them, unlike the things that go under your spell menu have this in it. I, I think that is very nice. I love that feature. See, it's just adjusting all these classes to make that happen. Um, ease of use party AI, this is a must. Absolutely fixes so much. Um, gives you a bunch of different options for party AI uh, to choose from, to tailor your, your uh, party to your needs. So if, you're, if you don't like micromanaging, which we're going to be doing lots of micromanaging in this playthrough, we have to. But if you don't like micromanaging, uh, this is amazing. Um, and I do tend to leave party AI on just in case I forget to issue a command or something. Um, so we're, we are going to use this quite extensively. Be shuffling them around depending on the fight and our needs and how many attempts we've had and how well they have gone. <laughs> or rather, how specifically they have gone wrong. Now we are um, definitely going to be saving and reloading through this playthrough. Um, I know some people have done it without saving and reloading. I'm not doing that. That is, that's, that's not what's happening here. We're going to save and reload. If we fail a fight, um, we're going to try again. I'm not going to do like save scumming for individual points of damage or anything like that. We're going to retry whole fights, saving before them and um, saving after them once we win. Uh, so that is what we'll be doing. Uh, this uh, also, the enemies pre buff, we're going to pre buff. Uh, SES kind of requires that you do. It's built around the expectation that the player is buffing before fights. So, yes, it's a little metagamey in that way. Um, you have to, you know. Uh, you have to know that the fight is coming outside of game to know to do that. But again, the game is kind of, this mod pack is built around your, your pre-buffing your party. Um, improve text screens. Yeah, sure. Text screens are nice. Uh, initialize AI components. Yes. So this is a huge deal. This is the main reason why you want to be doing SES. So absolutely install this. So this is going to make all of the enemies smarter. The spellcasters will use their spells better. Um, fighters will use their abilities at the right time. Um, uh, bards will actually buff their party instead of just standing there awkwardly. It's, uh, there's, it's, it's going to be a whole thing. Basically, every enemy in the game becomes much, much deadlier. I don't really know what most of this means, other than, like the IDS map, I have no idea what that is, but it sure does seem to clear it a lot. <laughs> it must be important. Someone knows what it means. I don't have to, and neither do you. Neither do you, intrepid viewer. Excited for today, gonna have some visit with family uh, this afternoon, and then tomorrow I'm going to visit with my family too. It's going to be so nice. My mom's in town. So excited to see her, my sister. Last, get our holiday hangout sesh in. Hope you've had a had a good holiday season too. Lots of uh, lots of celebrations going on. Do do one of those. I hope it was good. Going and going. It just goes on. Matching all the stuff. Probably going to time lapse this part on YouTube. Not sure. Not sure. I, I've got a lot of video editing to do. <laughs> I haven't done much of that. I didn't really get that going. Been uh been harvesting those videos off my stream today and getting them ready to upload. I've been updating all my socials to get them all interconnected. Oh my I've got a YouTube music a channel and a YouTube gaming channel. Which is pretty exciting. So gonna separate those VODs out. Put all my VODs up and Probably do some highlights as well on there to put a space for my content to stay long term. Record of all this early stuff would be good. I, I do have to do a little editing though. 
Um, YouTube, I think, has like a four-hour limit. I forget how long. I'll have to look into that. But i got to come in under that limit. So I'll probably need to chop some stuff up, do some editing. And there's some parts I want to cut out anyway of me taking breaks and things like that. Might as well chop those out too while I'm at it. Put like a transition or something. Yeah, I'll do some editing. Um, fortunately, I took a, a multimedia presentation class in college, so I know a little bit about how to do that. I have, I have some practice there. Um, I'm certainly no expert, but I can do it at a basic level. All you need, I guess. Get started. I'm sure, I'll learn more and more as I go on. Practice it more and do it more. You know, I have. Planning on doing this for the long haul, planning on sticking to streaming and keeping at it. Do some content. I've been doing it every day. I probably won't be able to do it every day when winter break is over, you know, but I'm going to try to do it most days. Really try to get a lot of streaming in, put a lot of content out there. I really want to make a name um, because I want to get my music out there. I think that's really, it's probably better than my gaming content. At least I hope. I'm sure I have put a lot more time into it. I've been working on that all year long, so I would love for that to pay off, and at the very least, in some terms, uh, feedback and information on my end from people hearing it and letting me know, hey, this sucks, or this is amazing. Either way, I, I'm happy to hear it. I just need to get it out there in front of people. I want to get it in front of ears. It's, it's a big part of that long-term plan, so. I honestly, I'm amazed that people are watching anything that I make. I expected to be streaming to nobody for uh, maybe months, years. I, I didn't know how it was going to go. I was totally braced to have nobody here at all. Um, I was just going to yammer at the camera anyway and do my thing, laying it on, making it, putting it all out there, and you know, maybe somebody stumbles on it eventually. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting to see that things are growing really quickly. I've, I've had a a lot of viewers lately, especially my video yesterday, a lot of people stopped in and checked it out, so that's so exciting. Love to see that. Had some extra chatters come by. Really amazing to see it taken off, and I wasn't planning on seeing any kind of results for months or, or more. Really, I, I expected my music to be bringing attention to things, so maybe it, was, maybe it still will. I'd be very, very excited about that. Been uh, really, really planning, plotting on my steady content stream of music that's going to start here in here in July. That content stream is going to be steady. It's going to be a very steady content stream. <laughs> so excited for that. And I hear that that's the way to get it. That's what I hear. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I'm no expert musician or virtuoso or anything, so I don't think I'm, you know, Skrillex or whatever. But yeah, I've, folks tell me what I make is pretty good, and I think if I can, uh, if I can get it out there in front of some people, you know, get some opinions, you, I can. That's that is what I need at this point to get better. Honestly, I think um, I'm maybe a little bit in an echo chamber. I've got some other artists I'm working with, but they're all really stoked on me, and I don't, I don't know how how much I can trust the opinion of someone who's totally stoked on me, but yeah. Is that really is that really a viable thing? Should I should I be seeking people who aren't stoked on me already? I think I think I, I should at some point. So yeah, I mean, love to. Uh, although I guess if people are on my Twitch channel because they're stoked on me and I show them my music, well, that's not really accomplishing that, is it? Huh? What a predicament. <laughs> hmm. Regardless. Good to uh, it'll be good to get some feedback, even if it's bad. You know, I will be happy to have it because I just want to make art. I can't help but make art. I just do art relentlessly, a lot, and because it makes me feel good. In theory, that art could be potentially profitable. If somebody likes it enough, but uh, you know, even with that in the back of my mind, being like kind of an obvious motive, or it's not really. Why? I just, I make art because I have to. So I think that's probably a good thing. I think, I think that bodes well. My potential future as a musician. At the very least, I'm willing to take feedback and improve. 
you know, there's a lot of, uh, it's a brutal industry. There's a lot of nepotism there. But skill does matter when it comes to production, when it comes to music creation. Well, it can, if you're good enough, you can get there. Got to keep getting better. Got to you know, learn more about the piano, learn more about synthesizers, learn more about effects and after effects, and mixing and mastering and all that. You know, every single thing I learn makes me better. Someone says, hey, you know, do this. You, you're not doing this. What's, why are you not doing that? I'm not going to be offended by that. You know, that's great news to me. Somebody gave me advice. Even if they said it in an angry way, why would I take it that way when I could take it and run with it? And, and do better in the future so that I'm above that report. Eventually, if I keep that attitude, if I keep working at it that way, keep getting better and better and better, I figure one of these days I'll be good enough. Got to stick at it. Got to stick at it. That's really, probably most things are that way. Most things are. At least, uh, you know, I, I will acknowledge I'm fortunate in that I'm able to work from home. I, you know, I've already got a pretty good education, well established as educators. So I, I, I'm glad that I, I'm extremely fortunate that I even get to attempt to be a teacher. Even just trying to do this, I'm so lucky already that I'm able to put this amount of time, this amount of work. I, I would love to see it all. I'll pay off sooner than later, but I'm going to keep working at it until it does. Smarter General AI, we want this so much. This is great. This is going to make the whole game so much more dynamic, so much more fun. Yes, it makes things harder, but it is so worth it. Okay. I never did make that call. That's why we got this going. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make my hot beverage a choice. I recommend you going for it. I also like tea. I am not, not a coffee elitist. Love tea, but I have really been on a coffee kick. Gotta have it. That and that I have really been enjoying. It's a bit, uh, if you haven't tried it before, it's not the most common tea. It's called Roy Boss. Africa. It's red in color. It's very earthy. This has got some antioxidant properties, so it's good for you in that sense, kind of like green tea in that way. It's delicious. I have it with um, honey. I've been really enjoying it with clover honey. It's a really good combination. Yeah, right now, coffee. A lot of cream and sugar in it. Probably entirely too much. It's going to be like.
Your coffee is brewing now. This is here. The caffeine in my system. Take a little sip on down to the caffeinated. Delightful journey there. Whichever beverage gets you there. We are um, upgrading basically all of the spell lists and ability lists of basically every single uh, enemy in the game right now. We're making them all much smarter, much stronger. Good. So, then a little bit about the party that we party we want to have here. Now, part of Baldur's Gate, success in Baldur's Gate is having a balanced squad. You really want to balance things out, make sure you have every single role met, um, but also you really want to have a divine magic user and two arcane magic users. That is another thing that is very important to consider. And likewise, you need to have a someone to tank, someone to do lots of damage, and someone to find uh, traps. Go smarter. So we do want that. Um, so we've got a few very, very, very important roles that must be filled. Regardless of what class archetypes we choose, how we build our squad, we need to have that one. Two arcane caster, divine caster. Archetype and then a tank and a damage. So we're going to wind up with that with whatever we choose. <laughs> now, as far as casters are concerned, we are going to be dealing strictly with low level casters at first, which is going to influence our choices here because casters at low level in Baldur's Gate are <laughs> they're kind of worthless. We definitely want to have. Probably, I mean, picking a sorcerer for Baldur's Gate 2 would probably be good. But sorcerers in Baldur's Gate 1 are so bad. They're just pitiful in terms of their power level. You're effectively just a, a bad sling user in Baldur's Gate 1 for, like, most of the game. When you get to Baldur's Gate 2, you can really take over. You get things like lower resistance um, and instant death spells that you can spam out. But uh, at this point, hmm to say uh, exactly what I want to do. I guess it depends on what exactly we get. Now as far as our DPS is concerned, that is fairly easy. I think I'm going to want an archer, some kind of archer archetype, maybe a fighter. would be a good option so that we're just spamming out lots of arrows per round. We just installed, I forgot to check what this was actually that we wanted. That's probably not advised. Potions for NPCs. Yes, so that is something that you do want. Uh, this, again, just makes the NPCs terrifying. Now, um, those assassins, they've got invisibility potions and poison weapon potions. The mages, you know, they've got potions of uh, stone skin or potions of defense that they can spam or potions of haste. Even. So, uh, everybody gets much scarier. We're going to need those potions, too. This is going to be an adventure. I'm excited. I, I After having beaten uh, Baldur's Gate 2 uh, on these settings, or similar settings, rather, so pumped to try out Baldur's Gate 1. Go back and do things at a lower level and carry that character over into Baldur's Gate 2 and Throne Ball. Very fun series. Improved spiders. Sure, that makes spiders very poisonous. Um, uh, sword spiders are insanely deadly. They're like hasted. Uh, phase spiders teleport to your mages, which is super scary. Um, sirens and dryads. Uh, sirens will actually do siren things. Dryads will do dryad things. We want that. Um, carrion crawlers will actually target enemies. Um, why are there two of these? Even smarter carrion crawlers, I guess. Let's make them even smarter. 
Uh, some more basilisks, sure. Improved doppelgangers. Sure. Office time. What do we got here? The black talents and iron throne guards. Sounds good. I enter. That's all we gotta do. I enter. That's it. Once you get this running, it's really not too hard to finish it up. Let's see. An improved deployment for parties of assassins. So this puts assassins in deadlier positions um, when they ambush you. This is definitely something you want. Uh, if you are looking at least the challenge of the game, improved kobolds. So these makes the kobolds swarm. Again, uh, kobolds are made kind of dumb in Baldur's Gate uh, because of, well, AI restrictions, but kobolds are actually very intelligent by design. I don't know what relocated bounty hunters does, but we're going to do it. Maybe if you care. If you go to Gibberlings 3, uh, you can find all of these. You can find a list of what each one of these does uh, specifically, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go in semi-blind uh, here. I've started using Baldur's Gate 2 with SAS, or SES, rather, same. So this should be a, a challenge and really fun, I think. Improve Durlag's Tower, so this. Uh, remember, Durlag's Tower is hard already, so making it harder sounds great. Let's go. Uh, In it. Yeah, I mean, it pretty much just runs itself at this point. Oh, hey, got a couple people here. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you at the stream. Or, uh, just putting together some There's our mod set here. If you haven't seen the difficulty of everything uh, fairly dramatically by making the AI a lot smarter. You have, uh, if you're new to the game or you haven't really played on harder difficulties, I would still recommend you install it for your next playthrough. Just make sure you turn the difficulty settings down a little bit, because again, this does make the game a lot harder. But what it also does is makes the game more interesting and realistic, in my opinion, because the mages will actually cast their spells. The shapeshifters will shapeshift. Uh, the assassins will be invisible and use poison weapons. Um, so everything is much deadlier and much more immersive and realistic. Sure, let's make the demon cultists smarter. That sounds terrifying. Let's go. Let's crank it up. Make it as hard as we can. Within reason. Uh, you know, I think this uh, is nice. Thing. We're not going to throw away all of our items or try to do it without saving and reloading or anything wild like that. We are going to mod this out and make these, make these AIs really smart, give them everything. It'll be fun. I'm going to play all the way through Baldur's Gate. One and Baldur's Gate 2 and Throne of Fall Enhanced Edition. So this is going to be a whole series, and we're starting it up today. Improved Bacillus. I don't know who that is, but he is improved now. Or she is improved. Maybe it? Maybe it is improved. Right? So it goes. Coffee? Array. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, sure. Make the red wizards scarier. They're already fairly scary. This is, uh, if you're not familiar, this is a fairly long process. We're about halfway through it. About a 30 40 minute process, depending on what you're installing. We're installing pretty much everything, so it's near the maximum. Um, you don't have to, you can install blocks of it. It won't necessarily show you all of this if you don't ask it to show you all of this. So, uh, yeah, grab your, grab your hot beverage of choice. I just finished up my cup of coffee. I'm going to be sipping on it, chit-chatting, while we are uh, getting this installed and thinking about what our party is going to be like. If you've got any suggestions, say, for character names or a, a class that you'd love to see, uh, Go ahead and let me know, and we'll we'll get it in there. Try to figure out um, how we can build around that. 
make a whole party. Chapter 2 and battle. Alright, let's yeah, that sounds good. That and battle is pretty hard. Chapter 3 and battle, that one's hard too. Let's make it harder. We want lots of puzzles to figure out. These ones are going to make us stop and save and reload. What? That's just fun. That's part of the fun. I'll figure it out. Treat them a bit like a puzzle. Yep, minor encounters. Let's make them hard. Everything is deadly, and everything is trying to kill you. Bears, they're fast now. Wolves, they work in packs, and they're also fast now. There we go. So we can see here now everything is done. We've got a list of everything we installed here. So there's a bunch of stuff that's skipped because it only works for Baldur's Gate 2. Um, and in fact, that's something that I didn't note. Um, the same thing that you download to install this into Baldur's Gate 2 1 works for Baldur's Gate 2. It works for Icewind Dale. It works for Siege of Dragon Spear. It works for Throne of Ball, which is attached to Baldur's Gate 2, so you don't have to do that separately. So that just this one thing can mod out all of these with Sword Coast Stratagems and improve the AIs. Um, you don't have to do anything special. It'll, it'll detect which game file uh, or which game folder you put it in. You just need to move it to a different registry and start it up again, and it'll patch that game out. Make sure that you have the game closed um, and your previous save files. You'll want to of course, back those up because those won't be compatible with your new um, modded version. Sometimes they work. Like uh, a lot of the time, especially for fairly early in the game, it will it will carry over and be okay. But there may be some issues like missing textures. Um, and in general, it's just advice to start a new game after you start SCS. So we've got everything installed now. Um, so we can see we skipped all of this Baldur's Gate 2 ex specific stuff. We installed Divine Spells from Icewind Dale. We have removed plus one arrows. We have removed plus one weapons. We've uh, and made them all fine, so they're non-magical. We don't get magical weapons until plus two, which is going to be quite a challenge. There are certain enemies that are going to be made much more deadly because of that, and we'll have to puzzle a way past them, um, or just wait <laughs> until later. Um, we have essentially removed arrows of dispelling from the game. There are only a handful available in the entire game now, um, and we have to think very carefully who uses them and when. Um, so that's one of the main reasons I want to carry an archer is because these things are so powerful, even though there's only, I think, about 30 available. Um, they can just pretty much insta-win fights for us. Let's see. We have a wider selection of random scrolls. So this now will include all of the Icewind Dale scrolls and a bunch of scrolls that we couldn't get before um, in the random pool. We have reduced the Inquisitor's Dispel Magic down to 1.5. This is mostly just a balance preference. Um, you can reduce it down to one um, or leave it doubled if you prefer. Um, I think doubled is a bit strong. This is strictly a nerf to the player character because I don't think you actually face any Inquisitors in the game. Um, so this is a nerf to any character you make and the, uh, the Inquisitor PC that's in the game. We have made Cure Wounds and Cause Wounds heal and inflict maximum damage. This is just for consistency to make them a lot better better overall because these spells kind of suck. Um, note that this does help us, but it also helps our opponent because they're going to be using these spells, and those harm spells are going to hurt. Um, <clears throat> we have made it so that Restoration and Lesser Restoration heal ability score damage. This is um, going to help a lot with our um, certain sections of the game uh, where we're going to be faced with a bunch of extra enemies that do ability score damage. Um, because of SCS, so this is something that's recommended if you're if you're improving uh, the enemy AI and making certain encounters harder. You're going to want to have this there. Um, you can see we've made uh, bears faster, wolves more realistic, uh, made shape shifting better for us and for the enemies. Um, we've made it harder to get a good reputation. We did uh, a couple quality of life things here, which are uh, the improved uh, customization for NPCs. Skill points assigned in multiples of five and spell sequencers into innate abilities. These don't actually affect gameplay. They affect um, menus and interaction and stuff like a, that last one just moves your spell sequencers underneath of the star icon as opposed to them being under the magic icon. Um, this ease of use party AI is one of the best things about this mod pack. I highly recommend it. It gives you a bunch of different options for scripts party's AI. And then uh, these 
uh, text screens. Those are nice. <clears throat> Initialize AI components. This is the big reason that you want SCS in the first place. If you're only going to do a little bit of the pack, this would be the thing that you want to put in there that makes um, all of your AI enemies much smarter. So we've got smarter AI, better calls for help, smarter mages, some priests, triad sirens, carrion crawlers, black dragons, all sorts of stuff is stronger and scarier. We've improved the, uh, a lot of sections of the game to make them more difficult and interesting. Um, we've made our chapter end battles way harder. Um, that cannot be understated how huge uh, those uh, difficulty increases are for these chapter end battles in our final battle. And we've also made these minor encounters really dangerous. So these are going to be scary. Anytime we try to arrest in the wilderness, anytime we try to do travel, we need to be prepared to take on some pretty scary opponents. I don't like to do, uh, I like to try to avoid save scumming for rest if you can. If we're gonna fake, if we're gonna take a death, I will usually try to do a, a previous load, and we can go further back. Um, so maybe we uh, we go earlier in the dungeon, and we we leave and come back. Even um, you know, just anything to avoid doing that saves coming stuff. But we will do saving and reloading um, in a in a in a balanced manner. <laughs> so uh, now that that's done, we can just listen to this bottom line. Press Enter to exit. That'll close it. All be done, and we do want to press enter, and we can just close this window. We're done. So now all we need to do is bring up Alder Escape. We open this. I'm going to go to Steam. Let's click play. Get figured out. Okay, so let me help this figure out where Baldur's Gate is. I think I can not let it grab it. Okay. Just out of full screen. Uh, find it here. Yes, correct. Uh, oh. I think that should be fixing. It's big. Okay. Now we have all this game. So let me quickly, these sounds are a little loud. Bring this down a touch. About your ear drums. More like this, I think. Bring this in volume down to about the music level. Our movie's fairly loud. Now, what we do with our um, settings here is very important. So, go ahead and screen this. That should remember where everything is. Oh my. Okay, well, I do need to fix that. One moment. Bring this down. There we go. Okay, that's better. Um, yes, yeah, so now we have... Um, and what we want to do here, gameplay, and think very carefully about some of these settings. So, uh, the tooltip delay I like to have very low, so that things appear pretty much as soon as you hover over them, so one tick above the bare minimum. Board scroll speed, I want really high so that I just zoom across. Mouse scroll speed I want pretty high. We're going to turn the difficulty up to insane because we are absolute mad lads. Let's see, uh, cloud saves are fine. We want the area map background. That just helps us see where we can click and where we can't. Oh, we don't need this chat box. to turn off gore. And let's see, weather is fine. Group infravision we want. We don't want rest on heal until healed. We do want max HP on level up. This is really important uh, for SCS. This is one of those things that is very recommended. Um, yeah. So uh, Sword Coast Strategy Gems assumes that you have this recommended. 
So this is how we are going to avoid taking like 250 damage from every harm spell. With those uh, heal and harm spells maxed out, we have to play with this. The game is literally impossible without that. We're going to leave that up there. Also going to turn on Don't Melee after depleting one ammo stack. That is, again, a quality of life thing. Um, this, this will keep your people from charging in as soon as they run out of one ammo stack when they have more. Okay, so this is the setting. These are the settings I like to use. We can go to uh, feedback here. This is going to show us stuff in the chat box while we're playing. This is totally your preference of how much information you want, what you want here. I'm going to show you what I like to use. Um, so uh, I like to use higher marker feedback. So you'll notice here this is selected, targeted, or hostile creatures, and selectable creatures will have um, a marker beneath them. They're going to have a little circle under them. Um, the locator feedback, this is, uh, if you scroll around your screen, this determines when arrows appear telling you when your party is. So we're going to leave this on medium. Um, so if your character is selected, it'll show you where that character is. Um, and that way we can locate individual characters very easily if we need to spread out the party. I like to have that. Um, for our feedback messages, uh, you, a lot of people will turn the two hit rolls off. If you're not a big D&D player, you can turn this off and it will make it uh, make all that D&D stuff sort of just go into the background. You don't have to worry about it as much. Um, I like to see the two hit rolls so that um, mostly I can screech about them. Um, when we get like a bunch of critical misses in a, roll, in a row or something, uh, it's, that's just that's something I enjoy. I like to see those rolls. Um, I also like to, it's very important to be able to see characters' actions. This way you can see what, when someone is casting a spell, for example, what spell they cast, what spell you cast, and when you're done, all this stuff. Um, state changes, this is important too, so this is going to be things like poison, etc., etc., um, fatigued, that kind of thing. Um, combat information you want to see, um, attacks missed, attacks hit, uh, how much damage, um, character selection text, this is, I think what they say when you click on them, so I'm going to turn that off. And then other types of message, we're going to leave miscellaneous on. Well, now for our visual feedback, we're going to use um, uh, just green circles under our characters instead of the colored selection circles. Um, and we're going to use uh, more confirmation prompts. No cosmetic attacks. So this, normally your characters will just stand there doing this. Um, and if you turn on no cosmetic attacks, then they will only attack when an attack is actually being rolled. Um, so this, again, this is going to... Especially if you have the rolls showing here, the two hit rolls, you probably want to have no cosmetic attacks on too, otherwise it's going to look really weird. And so this, I think, makes the game just visually look a lot better. Um, let's go show a pop-up. Yep, so this will tell us when we get a journal entry, um, and this will... So us equipment comparison, both of those are really nice. Okay, we're almost done. The other thing we want to do under gameplay is auto pause. And this really will define um, how your experience goes when you play this game. Um, you can essentially turn this game into a turn-based game with auto pause. Uh, you can just highlight all of these and anytime anything happens, the game will pause. Um, that is a bit much for me but I do heavily use autopause. And, and if you want to play on higher difficulties, I recommend you use autopause too. It's probably mandatory on some of these higher difficulties, especially with SCS, um, to have some of these activated. So I'm going to show you my favorites here. Um, weapon unusable. Uh, this is, say you run out of, um, say you run out of darts in your hand, but you have more in your bag. Uh, it will still pause here instead of just grabbing more darts and continuing to throw. Uh, so do note that can irritate some people, but I like to have that activated um, just to, to let me know when a stack of ammo is depleted. That's useful information sometimes. Um, end of round. So uh, if you're not aware, this is based on D&D &D, uh, and things happen in combat rounds where everybody takes uh, a, a set number of actions, does a certain number of things, and then a round begins. Um, so every time the round begins, you can enter a bunch of commands, and those will start to execute right now. So I'd like to have this activated to tell me when I can start casting spells. Um, so uh, again, enemy sighted. This is really important. Uh, I think you should absolutely play with this on regardless of your playstyle, just to prevent you from randomly face planting into massive combat encounters. As soon as you see an enemy, 
often before they see you, the game will pause, so you can grab that character and tell them to walk the other direction, meaning that you don't have to start most combat encounters on the on the wrong foot. Very important. Uh, spell cast is another thing. This can help so much when you're trying to buff before big fights. Um, to, for it to pause as soon as you're done casting a spell, you can then issue another spell um, with no time lag. That helps a lot. Trap found. This is another one like enemy sighted. I recommend you absolutely have this. Uh, trap found is going to pause it as soon as you see a trap, uh, and that can prevent you from accidentally walking over them, um, even though you have seen them. Very important that you have that on. <clears throat> now the stuff on the left, this is very subjective. I like to have a uh, character's target destroyed so that uh, if someone is targeting something that dies, I can just immediately retarget them. I don't usually worry about character attacked. This one I don't think needs to be on. Same with character injured. Um, this, sometimes, if they get seriously wounded, um, you know, it will be worth pausing. So we may reconsider here and put that on. Character hit, I think, drives me insane, so I would never have that on. Um, character death, I definitely want to pause, mostly so I can instantly reload if I don't have some kind of resurrection mechanic. Um, and I like to turn this off. I don't want to center on the party member. Uh, so just character death, the character's target getting destroyed. Um, you know, let's turn on character injured, and if we hate it, we'll turn it off. We are going to be taking a lot of damage. It may just be, it may just be too many pauses. Okay, so now that we've got that, uh, let's see, we've got sound, uh, selection sounds, very... I don't like, I don't really like selection sounds. Um, command sounds, I'm fine with. Our stuff here, battle cries are good, character subtitles, um, character movement sounds are nice. Um, let's see, for graphics, uh, let's see, we can change our font sizes here. So I'm going to make, I think, this probably looks nice. Mouse cursor, so. Got a lot of settings here, but most of them seem fine. Um, the big one here is grayscale on pause. This I like to have uh, enabled so that you can see when you're paused, all the color goes away. That way you don't have to wonder whether you're paused or not. It's very helpful. Um, scale user interface is another thing. This will um, change what the game looks like pretty dramatically, so that depends on your experience. Uh, but note that if you have a small screen, it doesn't matter. You may not even need that. Character HP health bars I like to have. Scrolling out of bounds um, I don't like. Moves out the sprites. Yeah, okay, so we'll leave that disabled. And uh, we can we'll leave that zoomed. 